Hi church, what a joy and a privilege to greet you through this video. Today, we have an exciting guest speaker all the way from Malaysia, Dr. Chu Wengqi. He's the senior pastor of SIB Church in KL, a mega church in the city of KL. Now, I'm so deeply thankful to the Lord for his life and leadership. I have been personally blessed you know, once a month we meet together and during the time we are so blessed in the conversations that we have uh, around the things of the kingdom of God. And I'm so deeply thankful that he accepted our invitation to bring the word of God this morning. Dr. Chu is a trained obstetrician and gynecologist, but he later went on to do theology in Regent College, Vancouver, and today Many are blessed by his ministry. He has a heart for Malaysia and especially a heart for East Malaysia. And the work that they do in Sabah, Sarawak is outstanding. Today, you're going to be greatly blessed. And let's put our hands together to welcome Dr. Chu. Hi, everybody. First of all, I want to thank Pastor Paul for inviting me to share with you today. Uh, IDMC Australia uh, on what the Lord has laid in my heart. Uh, Pastor Paul and I are part of the global IDMC movement spearheaded by Pastor Edmund Chan and every time we meet we have wonderful times learning from one another and understanding the times which is what I'm going to share with you today and before I do that let me pray. Father, I want to thank you for this wonderful opportunity that uh, we have to look into your word so that when we not only study it, but understand it, we are then wiser. Not with human wisdom, but with divine wisdom. So that like the sons of Issachar, we understand the times and we tell the people what to do. Help me, Lord, even as I download what you have put in my spirit and my heart to say to your people today. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen and amen. We live in unprecedented times, you know. A lot of things have happened in the recent years more so in the recent weeks. You know, so much so that my son asked me the other day, he said, Dad, have we reached the time of the four horsemen of the apocalypse? I said, son, why do you say that? And he said, Dad, look at the world today. There's war, there's death, there's a plague, COVID, uh, and before long, they, there's a strong possibility of a global financial meltdown as well as food shortage. And I said, no, son. We have not yet reached the stage of the four horsemen. Why? Because the Antichrist has not yet been revealed. That's my perspective. But I'm not here to talk about revelations. I'm here to say that times have changed and it is so important for you and I to understand the times. Jesus himself says in Matthew chapter 13, verse 14 to verse 19, and I read, Jesus says, blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. And anyone who hears the message about the kingdom, which you are going to hear in a short while, and does not understand it, what happens? The evil one comes, snatches away what was already sown in their hearts. In other words, it's not an option. Clearly, the Lord himself expects us, wants us 
to understand. Why? Because if we don't understand, then the evil one, Satan, comes and snatches away even what we do understand. What? In other words, we are left with nothing. It is imperative that we just don't look at things in the world today and say, ha, if, after all, this has been, the warning has been there for years, right? No. Times have changed. We cannot be in a state of slumber or stupor. I better pronounce the word properly, yeah? Stupor. Per. The difference between slumber and stupor is this. In slumber, your eyes are closed and you're sleeping. In stupor, your eyes are open and you're still sleeping. And I don't know why many people, especially husbands, come to the church, they slumber and they are in stupor. Because they find the church may be so comfortable. Jesus don't want that. He wants us to understand. The word understand is oida, is to know, is to comprehend holistically by our mind, our emotions, and also spiritually discerning what is happening. Jesus himself says in the book of Revelations, each time, he says something about the church. He, Jesus himself ends each of the seven letters. Whoever has ears, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. And I say this about my own church, my friend. And I say this to you in Australia. We must understand the time. So I'm going to read from the book of Romans, chapter 13, verse 11 to 14. And I will share with you the posture and what we must understand. So Romans chapter 13, verse 11, Paul says, Do this. It is a command. It's not an option, but do this. Do what? Understanding the present time. Because the hour has come for you to wake up from your slumber. Remember, slumber is stupor. Because our salvation or our deliverance is nearer now than when we first believed. Now, it, it was, if it was nearer then, don't you think it is much, much nearer now? Over 2,000 years later. Verse 12. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. Plenty of that in the church today. Rather, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the sinful nature. It's very, very important that what I'm sharing with you today in a short while can apply to you either personally, in other words, contextualize it to your own life, understand? Don't, 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 don't just hear a sermon, oh, it's for the church, it's for my neighbor, it's for the person sitting next to me, or it's for so and so. No, it's for you, it's for me. It can also to apply to us as a church. It applied to SIBKL when I shared this message some time ago. And also, I believe it applies to Australia because it's, this applies to Malaysia. And God is a God of the nations. So I'm going to share with you 
when we understand the times as an imperative from the Lord, what are the postures? Because unless we adopt these postures, postures, we cannot understand. So these are the five postures from this passage in Romans chapter 13 that we must have in order to understand. And we must understand. The first posture. Wake up! I hope I didn't wake anybody up. Wake up! Paul says in verse 11 to verse 12, and do this. Understand the present time. The hour has already come for you and I to wake up from our slumber. In other words, it implies that we have been sleeping, you see. I don't know about the church in Australia, but certainly the church in Malaysia has been sleeping for many years. So it is time for the church in Malaysia, for you personally, for me, to wake up from our slumber. Why? Because our salvation, our deliverance is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. Listen to me, my friend. We have to wake up. Unless we wake up, we will not be aware, we will not be cognizant of what's happening around us. And we just hear a CNN, BBC, Al Jazeera, and just hear it as a news item. What's happening in Ukraine? What's happening in the world with the COVID? What's going to happen in the coming days on the, on the financial crisis? There's, everybody is now jittery, you see, and food shortage. Wake up. Pastor John Molende, one of the great statesmen of the world today from Uganda, has been several times to Malaysia and to my church, SIBKL. He's written many books. And the latest book that he wrote several years ago, before the, the pandemic struck, is entitled The Midnight Call. Are you ready? And the last two chapters are very, very relevant and titled The Signs of Our Awakening and God's End Time Agenda. And as I read that book, more so now is it so relevant. Because we see God's end time agenda unfolding before our eyes. Never before have we seen so many things converging and coming to some kind of a happening. The Ukraine war. Wow! Suddenly it happened just 50 over days ago. The COVID pandemic is still raging even though now it's the Omicron variant but we don't know the aftermath of it. Earthquakes are still happening, and we don't know what kind of financial aftermath the war would have on the world scene with the sanctions going on, hurting Russia and also hurting the West and hurting Asia. Food shortage, in other words. Wow, wake up, my friend. Wake up. Because, as I said, times have changed. The writer of the book of Hebrews says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 25 to verse 27, See to it that you do not refuse him, that's God, who speaks. If they did not escape when they refused him, who warned them on the earth, who? Jesus. You know that Jesus in Matthew 24, 25 warned us of all these things? So the writer says, no. This is not new. It's written in the Word of God. Hey, people read it, people heard it at that time, people hear it now, and we refused Him who warned them on the earth while He walked on planet earth. How much less will we, if we now turn away from Him who keeps warning us from heaven? Wow! God is still warning us. 
The key is, my friend, are we listening? At that time, the voice, his voice shook the earth. But now he has promised, once more, I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. And the words, once more, indicate the removing of what can be shaken. What can be shaken? Material things. What can be shaken? Created things. What can be shaken? Idolatry. What can be shaken? The things that we see and we value so much today worth nothing. So that what cannot be shaken may remain. No, listen, I- I'm not a prophet of gloom and doom, understand? I'm not. I'm just expounding to you what is written in the Word of God. It's very important for us to take note of this. You see, not only must we wake up to the realities of the day, understand it, but we must also work while it is day. No, look, listen, I didn't say wring your hands. Uh. Another deal is ring, right? No, 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 no. Not wring your hands in desperation. Give up. La. No, don't do that. La is a Malaysian slang, okay? We need to work while it is day. Why? Because Jesus again says, look, let's listen to what Jesus says, not what Pastor Chu says, not what other pastors say, understand? Jesus says in John chapter 9, verse 4, Work while it is still day, for the night comes when no man can work. Now, can, look, listen. IDMC Australia, can you read this verse with me? All right, every one of you, whether you are at home or whether you're in church or what, whether you're living room or even the bedroom, come on, read this verse with me. Let's hear what Jesus says. John chapter 9, verse 4. Are you ready? Everybody, read out loud so that your neighbor can hear you, okay? Are you ready? One, two, three. Work while it is still day, for the night comes when? Absolutely right. No man can work. But you say to me, Pastor, what do you mean by work? I go to work, right? No, it is spiritual work. It means continue serving God. It means continue to build His kingdom. Don't languish. It's a term that my young adults tell me, Pastor, I'm languishing. Languishing? Yeah. It's a buzzword. They they languish. They just allow market forces to take over. They just lull themselves into a comfort zone. No. Work. Serve the Lord more. Minister to people. There are so many people outside there who are in need. And pray. Pray is work, you know. Why? Yeah, it is work. You remember, uh, uh, I, I remember Pastor Edmund's favourite, one of his favourite quotes. When we work, we work. But when we pray, God works. So we must pray. Work while it is still day. Because night comes when no man can work. You want to work also cannot work. Huh? So let me give you some Malaysian news because I don't know the situation in Australia. But let me tell you that over the last two years, when we were under lockdown and we were under so much restriction uh, with the pandemic, the church in Malaysia has been very active. We formed what we call the Malaysian United Firewall, where last year, for 52 days, Back to back, every day, we had 24-7 praise and worship and prayer. Churches took one hour. Over a thousand churches took part all over the Malaysia through all the vernacular languages, Malay, English, Chinese, uh, 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 all kinds of Tamil, you know. And we took one hour slots for 24 hours for 52 days. Whoa! It was powerful. And what he did, it galvanized the Malaysian church together. And never before, till now, has the Malaysian church ever been so united in prayer. And we are ready. The Malaysian church is strong, my friend. Praise God for that. So, listen to me very carefully. 
Australia. Listen to me very carefully. I, I think your election is coming soon, right? Pray la. Get together and pray. We must wake up. We must work while it is day because we can change the situation through prayer, right? But prayer is also warfare. We don't only work, we war. And this is the third and fourth posture that I want to mention today. If in this passage, he talks about in verse 12, the night is nearly over, the day is almost here, so let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Look, look, why do you put on armor for? Fight lah, war. So not only must we wake up, not only must we work while it is still day, we must war in the heavenlies, and I put it together, we must wear the armor of light. Why? Because it is spiritual, my friend. It is spiritual. We all know this well-known passage in Ephesians chapter 6. Paul says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power, His dunamis. Put on the full armor of God. The armor of God is the armor of light so that you can take your strength stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle, Paul says, is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of the dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. They want to destroy your family, destroy your church, destroy the nation. Therefore, Paul reiterates, Put on the full armor of God. The armor of God is the armor of light. So that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, Australia. You may be able to stand your ground, IDMC Australia. And after you have done everything, stand. Stand. You know, we must put on the armor of light. I, I, I tell my church this. Don't curse the darkness. Darkness will always be dark one. Huh? What for you want to curse something that is intrinsically evil? So don't curse the darkness. Just introduce the light. And darkness has to go. Put on the armor of light. I like this quote from John Stott. He says, we must not only wake up and get up, but also to dress up. We must take off our pajamas and put on instead a suitable daytime equipment for the soldiers of Christ, the armor of light. For the Christian's life is not a sleep, but a battle. And what John Stott said encapsulates what I've been trying to say to you today, IDMC Australia, wake up, work, put on the armor, war, and wear the armor of light. And again, I will use this illustration from Malaysia. Uh, what has happened for those of you who are Malaysians to know that not only is the church in Malaysia I believe, strong, stronger and more united now. But also, do you know that before the pandemic, I'm talking now about SIBKL, we input and invested big time into East Malaysia. That's our call. That's the call of SIBKL. Those of you who know the church will know that our calling and our mandate is to strengthen the Bumiputra Church of East Malaysia, the native church. That's why we are called SIBKL, Sidang, Injil, Borneo. So kind of long story short, over the years, we have strived and did our utmost, invested big time to build up the native church of East Malaysia. 9.6% of the population of Malaysia are Christians. 
only 3% are in West Malaysia. Over 6% are in East Malaysia, Sabah, Sarawak. And they are natives. So we must strengthen them because therein lies the future of Christianity in Malaysia. The other side is very aggressive. So we cannot wring our hands in desperation, do nothing. No, we must put on the armor of light and stand. War. And I want to say this to you, that before the pandemic, over the years of investment in 2019, SIBKL sponsored a huge mega rally in the huge in the Padang of Kuching, where over 50, around 50,000 people came. Wow! And, and, and many people were saved, many people were healed, and more important than a mega rally, more important than bringing the, all these people to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, the churches came together. So you see the bottom picture, you get the Archbishop of the, of the Catholic Church, the Bishop of the Anglican Church, the, the, the head of the, 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 uh, the Baptist Church, the Methodist Church, the Presbyterian Church, SIB, independent churches, all came together. You know something? Where there is unity, God commands His blessing. And up to today, they are still united. So listen to me very carefully. War. War. And wear the armour of light. So how do we understand the present times as I close? Five postures. Now read this with me, church. Wherever you are, can you help me to summarize and so that what you hear today, you take, take it to heart, understand? Internalize it and let it work out in your churches, in your own personal life. So what are the five postures that we must adopt in order to understand and understand we must the present times come. Everybody say with me. Number one, the first posture is wake up. Number two, work while it is day. Number three, war in the heavenlies. Number four, wear the armor of light. And number five is very important. What is it? Everybody read with me. Number five, walk away from the deeds of darkness. Let me read. The night is nearly over, verse 12. The day is almost here. Let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light, verse 13. Let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. Rather, rather, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the sinful heart. In other words, friend, listen to me very carefully. Suddenly, Paul moves from a collective responsibility, from a corporate call, and zeroed into a personal call. You, you, listening to me now, walk away from deeds of darkness. Walk away. Why? Because the devil comes to kill, sin and destroy. Put on the armor of light. Listen to my friend, because times have changed. <sighs> I'm so, so excited about this. I'm so passionate about this. Because this is what, this is what the Lord is saying to me, to me, to my church, to Malaysia. I'm saying to you, IDMC Australia, do the same. Let me close. You know that there is a verse in Matthew 24 that Jesus said that puzzled me for a long time. Jesus said in Matthew 24 verse 28, where there is a carcass, there the vultures will gather. I repeat, Jesus says, where there is a carcass, there the vultures will gather. And for a long time, it puzzled me. Until I did revelations last year for 26 hours of teaching. And I came to Revelations chapter 19, verse 17 and 18, and I understood the eschatological 
interpretation of that verse when he talks to me about the banquet of the birds. Now, that's a different story. But as I read this passage again, there is certainly, besides the eschatological interpretation, there is also what I call the theological underpinning. What does Jesus mean when he inserted this in the context of Matthew 24? Wherever there is a carcass, there the vultures will gather talking about the end times. Clearly, it's about atmospheres. Atmospheres. Why? And this is my perspective. Where there's a carcass, there is death. Carcass is death. Where there's a carcass, there is a stench of darkness, of decay. Carcass decay. Vultures speaks of demonic spirits. So if I were to interpret it spiritually and theologically, Jesus is saying, if the atmosphere over your home, over your church, over the nation is death, defeat, darkness and decay, demonic spirits will come in because it attracts demons. So what must we do? We must either shoot the vultures, shoo them away, or shut them out. We cannot allow them to come and destroy your church, your ministry, your family, yourself, your nation. It is incumbent upon the church of Jesus Christ to shoo away the vultures, shut them out, or shoot them down. If you don't do that, You will be destroyed. Let me close with this amazing photograph taken by Kevin Carter. In 1994, this photograph won the Pulitzer Prize for photojournalism. Kevin Carter was a South African photographer that was in Sudan at that time, during the height of the famine. And he came across this child who was dying, and the vulture was waiting for the child to die from starvation. He took this picture. He said that he went and took several angles of it, and he won the police Prize. But then after that, many people asked him, Kevin, what did you do with the vulture? What did you do with the child? Did you save the child? He did nothing. He won the police prize. Why didn't he shoo away the vulture? Why didn't he save the child? This trauma affected Kevin Carter so much that in July 1994, Kevin Carter, at the age of 33 years old, committed a suicide because he could not forgive himself for doing nothing when he could save the child. I ask you today, my friend, what are you going to do? Will you do something? Will you just pray? Will you rise up in your spirit, man, and understand the signs of the times and wake up, work while it is still day, war in the heavenlies, wear the armor of light, and walk away, walk away from deeds of darkness in your life so that we can partner with Jesus and build up a strong triumphant church that the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So, will you join me? Will you join me? As I rally my people in Malaysia, you rally your people in Australia, 
And let's rise up, my friend. Understand the signs of the times and do something for the glory of God. Let me pray. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Father God, in Jesus' name, I want to banish indifference. I want to banish inertia. I want to banish sluggishness. I want to banish spiritual darkness. Be gone in Jesus' name from every one of us so that when we see, we can see with spiritual eyes. When we hear messages, we don't only just take it, trivialize it, but instead take it to heart, Father, because this is the Word of God. And so, God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray that our spirit will be awakened today. Will be awakened, our spirit man will be awakened, Father Lord, to answer your call, to do something, to do something, Father Lord, to join you in the spiritual battle and fight for our homes, fight for our families, fight for our churches, fight for our nation. Oh, in Jesus' name, I'm going to pray for the anointing of God, the Spirit of God to fall upon us today. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus, hallelujah. We know, God, that we do not fight for victory. We fight from victory because victory has already been won in Christ Jesus. We have just celebrated Easter. Father, in Jesus' name, let every day be Easter Sunday that we go forth our work even in the same resurrection power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead that is available to the church today. So I bless you, IDMC Australia. I bless you this day that the Lord will always be there for you. And so may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face always to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn His face towards all of you and your loved ones and your family and always grant you shalom. In Jesus' precious name I pray, and all God's people say, Amen. Thank you so much for having me.